sixth grade, module two, lesson 10, classwork. The distributive property and the products of decimals. So opening exercise, calculate the product. So we're gonna do this using the distributive property. So the distributive property means that we're going to break apart one of the numbers into different factors and multiply that way in order to make the problem a little bit easier. So I'm gonna leave 200 alone and take 32 and 6 tenths and separate it into 32 plus 6 tenths. So kind of like what we were doing in fifth grade when we were um, using expanded form. And then I'm gonna do 200 times 32 plus 200 times 6 tenths. So I just took 200 and instead of just multiplying it by 32 and 6 tenths, first I'm going to multiply it by 32, then I'm going to multiply it by 6 tenths. So 200 times 32 is equal to 6,400 plus 200 times 6 tenths. Well, I know that 200 times 6 is e would be equal to 1,200 but it's 6 tenths, not 6, so I'm going to move the decimal point, or divide this by 10, move the decimal point one place to the left, so it's 120. So if I add those together, my answer is 6,520. So that's just another way to do it um, that's not just multiplying like we learned how to do in fifth grade. and. And before going to B, since this part, example one, asks us about the same problem, I'm going to go down here and use partial products. So partial products is basically like the area model method. So let's look at, let's make an area model. And I'm going to multiply 200 times 32 and 6 tenths. But I'm going to take this and make this 32 and 6 tenths. So I split it up into 32 and 6 tenths. Now I'm going to just multiply. So 200 times 32 was equal to 6,520 and 200 oops, 200 times 6 tenths was equal to 120. So if I add those together, oh, I'm sorry, 200 times 32, that was our final answer, was equal to 6,400. So if I add those together, that is when I get 6,520. So now let's go back up here to B. So B says 500 times 22 and 12 hundredths. So I am going to use partial products to figure out this answer. Or let's just multiply this one like we learned how to do in fifth grade. So 22 and 12 hundredths times 500. So I'm going to start, 0 times 2 is 0, 0, these are all going to be zeros because we're multiplying by 0. Okay, now I'll put my 0 down, and again, I'm multiplying all by 0, so I'm just going to have a whole other row of zeros. Put two zeros down, now I'm multiplying by 5. So 5 times 2 is tw 10, carry the 1, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6, 5 times 2 is 10, carry the 1, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. So I don't even need to add because I'd just be adding zeros. So I get this large number, but there are two digits, these two, behind a decimal point. So I need to move my decimal point over one, two places. So I get 11,060 as my answer. So now let's see if we can connect that to the partial product method on example two. So we're using partial products in the distributive property to calculate the area of the rectangular patio shown below. 
I'm going to separate it here and so I'm gonna have 1200 feet and 22 feet and now if I do 12 hundredths times 500 I'm gonna get let's see zero 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 put my zero down get zeros again two zeros five times two is ten carry the one five times one is five plus one is six which we also could have done we got six thousand move our decimal point over two places so we also could have known that five times twelve is sixty and gotten it from that so this is sixty feet and then 22 times 500 0 times 2 is 0, 0 times 2 is 0, 10 it's going to be the same thing put my one zero down 0 times 2 is 0, 0 times 2 is 0 and 5 times 2 is 10 add them together and we get 11,000 so if we add those together, we get 11,060, which matches our answer up here. Exercises. Use the boxes below to show your work for each station. Make sure that you are putting the solution for each station in the correct box. Okay, so station 1 says to calculate the product of 300 times 25 and 4 tenths. So we're going to do 300 times 24 and then add it to 300 times, oops, I wrote that down wrong. It's 25 and 4 tenths. So, and then 300 times four tenths. So 300 times 25, well 3 times 25 is 75, and then add two zeros, so that's 7,500 plus 300 times four tenths, well 3 times 4 is 12 with two zeros, but then since this is four tenths, I need to move the decimal back one place. So 750 plus 120 would be 7,600 20. So you can see how if we break it down, it makes it gives us simpler problems to solve and we can get it done quicker. Station 2 says calculate the product of 45 and 9 tenths times 100. Now, we could do this easily just by moving the decimal point two places, but that's it's not really what they're wanting from us. So we're going to do 45 times 100. plus 9 tenths times 100. So 45 times 100 would be 4,500 plus 9 tenths times 100. Well, 9 times 100 would be 900, but we need to divide that by 10 because it's 9 tenths, so move the decimal point over one place. So we get 4,590, which is also what we could have gotten if we just moved the decimal point two places to the right because we were multiplying by 100. Station 3 says calculate the product of 800 times 12 and 3 tenths. So we have 800 times 12 plus 800 times 3 tenths. So 800 times 12, well, 8 times 12 is 96. And then we add our two zeros, except I wrote 99. 96 with two zeros, 9600 plus 8 times 3 tenths, or 8 times 3 is 24. But we have two zeros. But then I need to divide it by 10 because it's 3 tenths and not 3, so we get 240. So 9,600 plus 240 would be equal to 9,840. Station 4. 
says calculate the product of 400 times 21 and 8 tenths. So we would have 400 times 21 plus 400 times 8 tenths. So 4 times 21 is 84 with two zeros plus 4 times 8 is 32 with two zeros, but we need to divide it by 10 because it's 8 tenths, not 8. We get 320, and if we add those together, we would have 8,720. Then the last one, station 5, says calculate the product of 32 and 6 tenths times 200. So we would have 32 times 200 plus 6 tenths times 200. So 32 times 2 is 64 with two zeros plus 6 tenths times 2, or 6 times 2 is 12 with two zeros divided by 10. So 6,400 plus 120 is 6,520.